Kate Gate. Wind your necks in. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This is a channel about narcissism, psychopathy, the dynamics that are involved, the victims of narcissists, and the other personality types that have interactions with our kind. So, I tell you a lot about narcissists, the way that we behave, the way that we see the world, the various manipulations that we use, why we do this, what's behind our rationale as to why we did that. But I also tell you plenty about our victims, whether other narcissists, whether narcissistic people who aren't narcissists, normals, and especially empaths, because empaths are our primary targets. And I know plenty about that group because I've spent a lifetime engaging with them. I've observed what they do. I've watched how they react. I listen to the things that they say. I listen to how they feel. I observe the way that they respond in certain situations. And I've absorbed all of this information, categorized it, collated it, and I share it. And therefore... It's not just talking about the narcissist, but invariably talking about the way that a non-narcissist, for instance, an empath, might deal with the situation. And thus it's just as pertinent to understand the behaviours relating to the Princess of Wales and the whole brouhaha which has been dubbed Kate Gate. This started with the fact that some two months ago, the Princess of Wales, had abdominal surgery. She explained, via a spokesperson, although she didn't need to do so, that she was going into hospital. She explained, although she didn't need to, that she was having abdominal surgery. She explained, although she didn't need to, that she would not be engaging in public activities as the Princess of Wales, until Easter and she would be recuperating. Accordingly, if one were to ask, where is she? There's your answer. She's had an operation. She's out of the public eye. She'll be back around Easter time. Now, that's the information. You can go away. But of course, this then resulted, such as the world of social media, in speculation. She's not really having an operation. It's something else. Or she is having an operation. But what's the operation for, we should be told? Why? You're not a member of her family. Why should you know about it? Why should you be privy to a person's individual information about their medical situation and history? Do you go around sharing yours? Do you think everybody's entitled to know yours? Tell me now. Give me access to your medical notes. No, you wouldn't. Quite rightly so. Nevertheless, people, egged on essentially by the press as well, believe that we ought to be told why she'd had abdominal surgery. The speculation about it being a hysterectomy, that maybe she'd had an appendix out. Who cares? It's her body. It's a matter for her. It was not for public consumption. But those that like to gossip on social media and speculative elements of the press wanted to know. They wanted to know specifically what the problem was. This then led to speculation that she was actually in a coma. This led to speculation that Prince William had assaulted her. It led to speculation that she was actually dead and been shoved under the flagstones in the patio at Kensington Palace. Such was the pressure that built... It resulted in a picture being obtained that showed Kate in a car with her mother. But this still didn't abate the thirst and the speculation and the conspiracy theories. Thus, a Mother's Day photograph was released. But then this was subjected to scrutiny because the press didn't like the fact that they weren't getting the photos, but rather the Waleses were determining when they would release them. Thus, they created a campaign whereby they paid particular attention to the photograph, demonstrating that, look, it appears to have been edited and photoshopped. 
rather than asking, for instance, why is it we don't see Archie? Why is it we don't see Lilibet? The focus became on where is she? Is there something untoward? Because now there has been an edited photograph that has been put out. Why did Prince William suddenly have to bow out of a particular engagement? There could be a multiplicity of reasons, none of which are any of your business. The point is, people expect that the Princess of Wales ought to be telling everybody about these things. And then there was another photograph of her in a car with William and people started to say, she's not looking at him. They've separated. She's left him. But he's trying to control her. And then there was the footage that the son paid £200,000 for, showing the Princess of Wales and William out doing a bit of shopping in Windsor. And still the speculation continued. That's not her. It's a body double. Doesn't look anything like her. Well, bear in mind... How many of you have been up close and personal with the Princess of Wales when she's recovering from surgery, having lost weight and isn't wearing any makeup? That's probably why, for many people, it didn't look like her. They started saying that's not her ear, her chin looks different, etc. After all, they're all experts in the ears of the Princess of Wales, having spent many years standing next to her, scrutinising her earlobes and ear shape. The Princess of Wales hasn't come out and explained what's going on in any great detail, because as an empathic person, she feels no need to do so. She respects boundaries. She's not prone to oversharing. She's not going to engage in that kind of gossip-like behaviour. She's not a narcissist who has to shout about themselves, a la this one's wife, whereby, oh yes... I've had life-saving surgery. This is my personal battle against some kind of disease. Look, here I am sending you selfies from my hospital bed so you all see me and feel sorry for me. No, oh, I've just had a an abortion, or was it a miscarriage? I'm not sure because my name's Chrissy Teigen Tegan Tigen. But what I do know is I need to immediately get it on the gram oversharing information about something personal and putting it out in the world because I'm an unaware narcissist. I need to do that to control people and draw fuel from them. The Princess of Wales has no compulsion to share this information because she is not a narcissist. She doesn't need to control people. She doesn't need fuel. And that's why that there is an audience out there that is so used to famous people and celebrities, many of whom who are narcissists, sharing every facet of their lives with them, it has created an expectancy that Catherine should not only tell people that she's having a procedure, that she should tell them what it was for, that she should tell them how long she's going to be on out of action for, that she should be giving regular updates as to her progress, all backed up with photos and videos. The culture of instant gratification, instant access, which has been driven by a burgeoning sense of entitlement, fueled by the narcissists of the world and those behaviours becoming drivers of the mainstream, has resulted in many people simply losing sight of the fact that this is an individual who is entitled to privacy in relation to her medical situation. But rather, rampaging hordes on social media believe that they're allowed this information, that there ought to have been some in-the-moment cam camera broadcasting in pin-sharp pin crikey vision what was actually going on with the Princess of Wales. There are plenty of people that show that decency of it's a private matter, leave her alone, she's recovering, for goodness sake. You were told that she was having surgery, you were told that she was recuperating, and that's what's going on. But moronic hordes on social media, along with the press, are whipping up a frenzy. Because there is that desire to speculate. And, of course, by creating conspiracy theories and the press playing into them, it gives them something to report on. 
And there's a lot of people that want to read about all of that and hear about all of that because they enjoy the salacious nature of it. Rather than exercising some restraint and thinking, do you know what, this is all rather unsavoury, we've been told why she's not around, let her just get on with it. It's, ooh, is it really the case that they've separated? Ooh, is it really the case that uh, Prince William might have assaulted her? And therefore, the TikTok videos in particular, with the speculative nonsense, get millions of views, and then it creates an illusionary reality that the people who fail to engage in critical thinking start to accept that, well, because it's in a video and it's been mentioned lots and lots of times, that must be reality, rather than thinking, just because some crackpot comes up with an idea that Catherine has been in a coma and that William rushed away because she was waking up and he wanted to ensure that she kept stum because he'd assaulted her, because that's been repeated in because that's been stated in a video that's been watched maybe millions of times, that becomes the truth. Rather than thinking, but is it plausible? Is there any other evidence that supports that? People just sit there slack jawed, accepting this illusionary reality that has been created. And this plays into the hands of my kind, because we create an illusionary reality in the relationships that we have with people. And therefore, the more that we do this, and the more that social media enables us to create an illusionary reality, the more that people lose sight of facts and evidence and the truth, and instead end up accepting as the reality information which has been concocted. And take, for example, I received an email that was sent to me, providing me with an exchange between two people, where one was emailing the other who didn't appear to be responding. But this was the content of it. So the originator wrote, her YouTube channel says she's going to make an appearance on the 31st of March. By her, it's meant the Princess of Wales. The Princess of Wales doesn't have a YouTube channel. But immediately, here is a person who's stating her YouTube channel says she is going to make an appearance on the 31st of March. Obviously, she can't be bothered to say this herself. She has to get someone to say it for her, as she is totally, still totally incapacitated. How do you know that? There is no evidence to show that she's totally incapacitated. Indeed, there's evidence of her in cars and walking around, which suggests that she isn't totally incapacitated. But this individual, who wrote this in the course of today, did so based upon not only no evidence, but notwithstanding that there was evidence to the contrary, yet still believes it, and then operates in a high-handed way to criticise the Princess of Wales, saying she can't be bothered to say this herself. This person then goes on to write, what kind of abdominal surgery does that to someone? Well, it's none of your fucking business. And how is it that King Charles can openly talk about having prostate cancer? but Kate Middleton can't reveal anything about her abdominal surgery. Well, I'll answer that for you, because they're two separate individuals. And King Charles, also as a consequence of being a narcissist, deems that it's appropriate for him to provide that information, because his narcissism drives him to do so, for the purpose of assertion of control and the drawing of fuel. But Catherine, who is the Princess of Wales, doesn't reveal anything because she's better at recognising boundaries and she doesn't have a compulsive need to tell you every facet of her life because she's not driven by that need to control and garner fuel. But this person persists. What is it? Did she have her appendix out? It has nothing to do with you. This person then writes, I can't stand her. I hate her. Unless she has some unknown and highly persuasive and valid reason for acting like this, I think she's an arrogant POS. So this individual, who doesn't know the Princess of Wales, deems that it's entirely appropriate for her to state, you should be telling me what's wrong with your medical condition. You should be explaining to me because, hey, your father-in-law has said he's got prostate cancer. Why aren't you telling me what's wrong with you? Why aren't you telling me what your abdominal surgery was for? Why is your abdominal surgery keeping you out of circulation for so long? It has got nothing to do with you. And yet, these intrusive wankers 
continue to stick their necks out saying, tell me. But there's more from this person. He continues by stating, I watched another live stream about her. And she, the live streamer, said that none of her own family, such as her mother or sister, Pippa, visited her at the hospital, not her children. And William only went there once for no more than an hour. The live streamer isn't said. But where is their information coming from? Probably concocted in the bottom of a cup of tea from the tea leaves, I suspect. There are only two doors to the hospital, and nobody saw her leave. The conclusion must be that she wasn't there. Yeah, because... After all, everybody was camped out at the hospital watching. I mean, it couldn't be that she was in a vehicle that drove out without you knowing, could it be? Or that she left from when you weren't watching. Or that actually it's got nothing to do with you. But again, there is this necessity of commenting. It, the conclusion must be that she wasn't there, or if she was there, she is still in there, and that she's in a coma, which is what the Spanish press said, which of course has been denied. If she was never there, what does that mean? Well, wh which one is it? Is she still there in a coma or is she not there? You don't know. The reason you don't know is because you've got no evidence. You're just speculating. There was a hack of the hospital records in December and the hackers kept quiet about what they discovered for £300,000. How do you know that? That's again made up. What did they discover? That there was no record of her at the hospital. Why would the royals pay the ransom? What ransom? Why have the royals paid anything? What evidence is there to support that that's happened? There isn't. Then there is this latest breach of a hospital records by three staff members happening right now, which has raised a security alarm in Britain. Why? Is it just a breach of personal privacy? Or are they panicking because it will expose state secrets? I think the latter. Something is going on. Why can't she come to the phone? Why should she? I bet this March 31st announcement, where she was supposedly attend church on Easter Sunday, is just a ruse. It is a delay. That's one thing. And then they will give some new excuse for why she couldn't attend. Or they will have an actor play the part behind a black veil or something. We won't get to see her face. It's a farce. Why do you care? Why do you care? It's the Princess of Wales. She holds no power. She doesn't command nuclear missiles she can't instruct an army to invade she can't make adjustments to the economy she's a very pleasant person who married into the royal family and has dedicated her life thereafter to discharging her obligations of service and being the princess of wales but beyond that she doesn't matter she's not going to cause world war three She's not going to create thousands of jobs. She isn't going to cause the economy to tank. She's not going to invent something which makes the human condition far better. She's a lady who's got children, who's married to her husband, who has a royal title. And yet, these individuals believe that they ought to have information about her medical condition, what's going on, and so they sit with their idiotic gums flapping, their necks jutting out, trying to find out this information. But there's more. This individual again writes, anorexia, question mark. Or is she threatening to expose someone and they have her held prisoner? How can she be held prisoner when she's been seen in two vehicles and walking around following shopping? Marital breakdown due to an affair, perhaps. That would explain William never defends her reputation. Or perhaps it's because William doesn't feel that there's anything that he needs to defend because there's a load of nonsense and he's not going to get drawn into all this ridiculous speculation. They are separated. There is some dark, dark secret. Is this one's wife blackmailing her? What is it? Even if she's in a coma, why not just say so? Well, why? Let us assume she is in a coma. Why do you need to know? It's a private matter. Again, the fate of a nation doesn't hang upon whether the Princess of Wales is in a coma or not. If she's been in a coma and they choose not to tell you, that's because it's none of your business. And yet, this individual continues persisting. At one engagement, William had an empty chair next to him in a row of seats, reserved for Kate, but he didn't defend her reputation. To me, that suggests that she has left him. But she's just been seen walking around with him and in a car with him. Or is that because that's a double and therefore he's going to spend time wandering around with a double, is he? To me, that suggests 
that she has left him, and that he is saying he's hoping she will change her mind about him and return to his side. They are not on good terms, so he has no right to speak for her, hence he does not defend her reputation. They are not together. This fits in with talk about William having an affair with Kate's close friend, the Marchioness of Hanbury. She's called Rose Hanbury, and she's the Marchioness of Chumley, where she's actually come out and denied that there was any affair. If so, will Kate claim custody of their children, or are they the property of the royal family? If William is at fault, does that have a bearing on what happens? And what about the children, about their feelings in the matter? That would explain why that Photoshop photo for Mother's Day showed her with no wedding or engagement ring on her finger. Was it Photoshop because she doesn't have access to the children, and so she had to fake the pictures on Photoshop from old photos? Or someone, a friend, did it for her? Or, perhaps, far more logically... It was a composite image because children can be quite difficult to photograph so that they're not picking their nose or looking into the distance or yawning. But sure, it's because she hasn't got access to the children that she had to Photoshop them in. That's logical. Surely they have a professional photographer and PR department. It was taken by William. It was a family photo. If Kate is in hospital, why is she messing around with Photoshop? I think they are separated. She did not have access to the children. Are the children even in school? Who knows? Who are they with? Who has seen them either? If they go with Kate and Charles, dies, will Harry be crowned the king? You've got to be kidding. And Queen, this one's wife? And the children for hire? The ghost children? That would be the end of the royal family. No wonder they are panicking. What an absolute load of nonsensical, entitled speculation. But this is the nonsense that is being touted in relation to an individual who feels no compulsion to explain herself because she's not driven by a need to control people. She's not driven by a need for fuel. She respects boundaries. She remains silent. She is given information to explain her absence, but that hasn't proven to be acceptable to people because they demand more. There have been photographs provided, but rather than go, oh, yeah, that, yeah, I can see she's out and about, jolly good, move on, nothing to see here. No, that doesn't suit their need for gossip and speculation. So, oh, that's not her, it's a body double. Sure it is. That makes perfect sense to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, have a body double. What you are witnessing is a, a sense of entitlement amongst people who fail to recognise boundaries, who create an illusion of reality by pumping out information which is groundless, complete speculation, but then causes other people to watch it and think that must be true, rather than sitting and thinking about it, applying crit critical analysis, looking at the evidence, and they just accept it. It's no wonder so, so many aspects of the world are fucked. And then along comes skynews.com.au that reports as follows. The Princess of Wales's neighbours are fiercely protective of her and claim everyone will feel horrifically ashamed once we have more information about her condition, says To Die For podcast host Kinsey Schofield. I reported via Fox News last week that I know somebody who goes to school with their children and I also have another contact in the area, Ms Schofield to Sky News host Rita Pahane. They have both said that they've seen her and that the neighbourhood is fiercely protective of her and that they think that all of this speculation is ridiculous and unfair based on the information that they have. And they've also told me that once we have all the same information, everybody is going to feel horrifically ashamed and they're going to feel real guilt about the way that we behaved throughout this process. So individuals who have actual access to evidence, namely neighbours, who understand what is going on and recognise that there is time required for recuperation and privacy, have seen this circus unfold and have accordingly recognised that it is utterly ridiculous. The example I gave you there of the emails that have been sent to me is just demonstrative of the selfishness and the sense of entitlement, but also the complete lack of logic and reason that's existing in this instance. As I explained, at the end of the day, the Princess of Wales is a lovely lady who carries out her role very effectively, and she's much loved by many people. But other than that, it's not like she's changing the world. Yes, she's a good person. Yes, she's a fun person. She's a loving mother, 
and a, a good wife. She's a pleasure to be around. But she's not creating millions of jobs. She's not affecting the economy. She's a well-brought-up woman who's joined the royal family. That's it. And people getting so worked up about an individual who actually has no real major influence on the world. She's not going to start any wars. She's not going to stop any wars. It's preposterous. And the way that they behave that is she's public property when she's not. As I've mentioned elsewhere, there'll be some who say, well, we pay for her, therefore we're entitled to know. No, you're not. The fact is, it's private medical information. And also, there are millions of public servants within the United Kingdom who are paid for by people's taxes. Does that mean that you expect to be entitled to know everything about that person, where they live, who their friends are, what they had for dinner last night, and whether they've had a camera up their backside or not? Of course not. So why should it be any different with the Princess of Wales? But of course, it's the laziness that comes with people being intellectually flabby, that they have grown up accustomed to being spoon-fed information without thinking about it. And one of the things that I regularly encourage people to do on this channel is to think, is to think about the information that they're being provided with, to test it, to analyse it, to place it upon the evidence. It's why my information about narcissism is based upon what actually occurs, that you can test it and see that it works with regards to the explanations and advice I give you for how you deal with narcissists. That by actually analysing what is happening rather than speculating about what's happening, you rely upon logic and not emotional thinking. And that means you achieve freedom far quicker, that you get rid of the terrible feelings and sensations associated with your emotional thinking far sooner. That you don't worry about something that won't actually happen, that you stop fearing something which is just a figment of your imagination. Going to the evidence, critical analysis is hugely important. In the same way, analysing the behaviours of this one's wife to test the credibility of the things that she does, to go behind the curtain, to ascertain where it's smoke and mirrors with her. And all of this brouhaha with the Princess of Wales has demonstrated that it's about time that people shut up, stop speculating, and that they wind their necks back in. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.